So welcome back friends to the shop. I've got an exciting video for you guys today. Finally, the seat swivels have come in. Seat swivels are probably one of the first things I would do on any sort of a van conversion. It changes everything. We've had them, I put them on our last van. I've never had a pair that were bolt on, turnkey ready. The ones I've had to do in the past were kind of makeshift swivels where I would, uh, you used to go to wrecking yards and find an old conversion van that was broken and adapt everything and make it fit. It uh, may or may not have been safe in a collision. These on the other hand are properly engineered straight out of Europe, custom tailored for the van. They're gonna work a whole lot better and be a whole lot safer. Let's take, take a closer look at them and then we'll, uh, we'll put one in and see how it works. So this is the passengers and this is the drivers. As far as I can tell, they're identical. The only difference is this one has got riser bars because on the transit you need to clear the emergency brake. And so that's going to rise, raise it up a little bit, which is fine for me because when car manufacturers, when they design vehicles, it's for an average height person, which is, you know, what, some like five foot eight or so. I'm six foot four, so I'll be very happy to have the, the increased si uh, uh, height. Uh, it'll help me be more comfortable driving position. So how these work is you pull this lever right here. This one's upside down, this one's right side up so you can see it. You pull this lever here and the, and the whole seat rotates like this. Over here, same thing, you can see on the top, you pull the lever and it rotates around so that you can face in any direction you want. This is so important when you have multiple people in a van because it turns the whole front cockpit, the driving cockpit, into essentially a living room. These are really nice. I, I like to say that these are the, I, I got the best ones that I could, <laughs> that are available. These are the only ones that are available for the transit van that I could find and they're built in Europe. So I've already unbolted the seat. It's just, it's just four Torx bolts, bolts, very simple. And then you unplug the airbag, uh, airbag switch on the seat. So here's the passenger seat base where the swivel's gonna mount. Batteries, man, a lot of battery experts in the comments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is, is you go to their site and there's no videos or anything mentioning about how they've installed these. So uh, uh, some concern that this is a highly volatile battery that's going to blow up and kill my family. Th this is not that type of lithium battery. I'm not a battery expert. I don't claim to understand all these things, but uh, Rick's in the company that makes the, uh, the furnace um, is supplying the batteries for me. I purchased them from them and they're helping me with the expertise. They really know them and so I'm just doing what I'm told. So this is not uh, the type of volatile battery that's in your Galaxy 8 that blows up on planes. This is, um, I think it's called a LIFEPO4, L-I-F-E-P-O-4, which is a non-volatile battery. Uh, it's very, if it gets damaged or uh, it's not going to blow up. It's it's a much much safer battery than some of that real higher end stuff like they have in electronics. So rest assured, there's not there shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but I do see a problem before we get started here. And that is this thing. I was, how is that going to work? That little metal thing. What is that thing even for anyway? Sticking up. It there's a conflict. Uh, it hits. So first thing I thought about. Well, first, I don't know what it is. It's for, I just don't know. I was going to cut it off, and then I thought, well, it's so close. Um, I don't think that I need to cut it off. Why don't we just, um, just bend it slightly? So I'll put the pry bar on here, and I'll just bend that. Maybe. Seems that the seat base is wanting to bend instead. It's so close. I don't think it's going to take much. No, it's going to have to come off. I noticed the videos are a little bit dark there, so I got some light here for you. Okay, so I think that the best way is going to be to cut this thing off, and I think I have just a tool for that. So to cut that little bit off, I'm going to use this little uh, pneumatic grinder. I, I bought these two tools like 20 years ago. Remember when Jesse James, the motorcycle guy, he was really popular? <laughs> He had his name on everything. Anyway, I just bought them on eBay. I didn't care about him. It was just a good price, and they were Mac was selling them. They're not great ones. They're just made. They were made in Taiwan, kind of middle of the road. But man, these two tools, uh, for I, I I couldn't hardly live without them. They didn't. Make, speaking of which. I've got the last video of the top 10, top 50 tools of all time. I've got everything set up. That's going to be coming up here really soon. I'm sorry. I had to pull off to do a couple of, or I wanted to pull off to do a couple of other things. Um, these didn't make, make it on the list, but if there was an altern alternate, uh, they would be on there. So let's hook this up and we'll uh, nip those off real quick. When using these grinding tools anywhere, even if it's in your shop, many a welding shop have burnt down 
after the fact, after everyone went home because a spark lingered somewhere. So what I kind of will do is uh, do a little test on there and see which way the sparks are throwing. And if you can take a, a welding shirt or something and kind of build yourself like a little catch blanket there uh, to minimize that, that's a good idea because you don't want those sparks getting down underneath of your, uh, your mat and burning down your van. Ground down the welds and polished everything up with the roll lock and I'll just hit it with a good automotive primer. And then we'll finish it with the Ford Satin Black, which will match that base there. It's a little bit cold outside. I think it's about 48, but it's okay. It's within the, the, the specifications for the paint. But if you do paint in the cold like this, I got a little heater. I'll just turn on there while we're jumping to the next thing. And I keep that, keep that warm. Let that dry a little bit quicker. And we can hit it with a little, little bit of that Ford Satin. That's a perfect example of the little difficulties that uh, are a constant companion on these <laughs> conversion projects. Okay, so I bolted this on just using the factory bolts and check this out. It turns very nicely. The seat will turn all the way around. The thing that, that I hadn't, uh, that I didn't know about this, uh, I hadn't realized that I really like about this was the last ones that I had, they latched in both positions. They latched this way and they latched forward. It's such a pain. You're constantly looking for the latch, and it was always in a very, not very, not a, it wasn't in a very intuitive place, and no one could ever find it. I'd end up having to help people. This one doesn't latch this way. Thank you very much for that. So it's rotate. It can rotate any way you want it. If you want to face the other person, if you want to face the table, if you want to face out, excellent, excellent. And then when you're ready to go in the driving position, of course, chunk that great big authoritative latch. Very simple. Very clean. I am a fan. I like it. Let's put the seat on. Make sure my don't have greasy paws here. Ooh, this I can tell it's taller. This these will raise uh, this, raise the seat height about an inch and three quarters. I think I think they said. Here's the hardware: Allen cap screws, metric system, 13 millimeter, two washers. So you put these on. They ask they require a washer on the top and the washer on the bottom for these. I go into these details because I I'm really have been at a loss to find good instructional stuff for uh, transit conversions because they've, they're so new. And so I'm putting this out there because there's a lot of folks that are doing this. These things are so popular right now. There's so many people building them um, that um, th this is a public service, so helpful. I, I know I would have loved to watch this video before installing them just so I knew, kind of knew what to expect. Apart from that little hiccup with that doohickey sticking out there, which I have still have no idea what that was for, uh, pretty straightforward. Everything is fit perfectly, easy to get to. One thing I'm really thrilled about, I was stewing about this last night, was I wanted to mount my battery disconnect switches in here, in the relays and everything for the starter. And I, I saw on the website, they had this, you know, the, of course, when I ordered these, this plate, I thought it was going to cover the whole thing, and I was bummed because I, I wouldn't be able to get to here because I want, so I want a manual over, manually override um, for the battery switch. Uh, I can easily get to it in there and mount all those electronics and the shunts and all that stuff. So that's going to be, that's much appreciated. I'm glad that didn't cover the whole thing. I do really like the Allen head bolts. I've, that's all I've been putting in. I've been using the stainless steel cap screws for everything in here. And they, they just finish off. They look so nice. Let's see how it works, shall we? So typically my experience with these is they won't turn in the full front. They won't turn in the full uh, back position on the slider. Uh, but somewhere in the middle, usually, which is, looks like the case here. You pull the red tab, tab and the seat swivels around. Just like that. The seat belts, there's plenty of seat belt that, that doesn't seem to be a problem there. I hadn't even thought about the seat belt, but that's all right. Yeah, it works fine. It just goes over around the side. How nice is that? I can definitely notice it's taller. So here's perhaps a better view that uh, goes around. Very nice. It's definitely taller. And the nice thing about these is you have, you still maintain all the function, function of the the factory slide and all of that. So that's that's really nice. It doesn't affect the seat in any way. And this is, I, I like the ability to, to turn. We're gonna put a table right here. So what, I don't know why, you know what would be cool is even in like a quad cab pickup, like the newer pickups, 
you know, there's lots of times, you know, like wildland firefighting, for example, let's say we've got three guys in there and everyone facing forward. And sometimes, you, you know, it's for some jobs and different things or you spend a lot of time in the car. Or if you take your truck camping uh, and you all sit in the car and everyone's facing forward, it's kind of a drag. I don't know why the factory doesn't have an option like this where you could take the front bucket seats and swivel them around. And um, like we're going to have a little table that flips up right there. This one will turn around. So four people, we can enjoy meals together or we could uh, play a game. Or if we went somewhere and got ra ra rained out, we're waiting for a rainstorm to clear. You know, you can come in and, and you can interact and, and enjoy one another. Um, and not everyone kind of stuck in a vehicle. It would just change everything, and it's just not that big of a deal. I think they had to do that, don't you? All right, so I'm going to install the, I'll install the driver's side now. I'll spare you all the details. Uh, I'll show you the end result, but um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think it's really great. Uh, this is not a product endorsement. Uh, people always ask. I paid for these with my own money. Um, I'll put a link to the company, uh, the website down below to help you find it, but I think it's a uh, Swivels are us, but uh, pretty seem like pretty de pretty decent guys. Um, but I'm I'm really happy with the product. This is this is one of the things that I've been missing the most with the van is having ability to to swivel the seats. Okay, welcome back. I've got the the second one installed for the driver's seat. So one issue that I'm having with this is that it made this. I'm, I'm afraid it may have made the seat too tall. Uh, it had to be, I had to put an addition, it came with an additional, like a two inch riser to clear this emergency brake handle. And I had Mrs. W come out and she couldn't, um, she almost can't reach the, the floor with her feet uh, if she needed to drive it. I mean, she could drive it, but it's not ideal. She doesn't often drive. Um, the other issue for me is that my my head hits this thing. So one of like Jack would have to well he's gonna be he's taller than Mrs. W now. Um she can sit here and her head clears, but her feet doesn't touch don't touch the ground, so that's uncomfortable for her. Um so I don't know if this is gonna work out for me. Uh this one's this one's great. I have plenty of room. I've even got a I've even got a footstool here. We can hang out that I don't know if that's gonna work I might have to return that the other issue I'm having with it is of course the uh, the driving position is I just don't know if that's it's almost too tall I mean I I can definitely reach the the seats and all it completely changes the driving position for me um, my feet are just barely touching and that's, I'm six foot four with a 34 inch inseam. Um, so man, if you were, if you were smaller than that, I don't think this has worked. But then the, the downside is, is now I'm, I, if I come up to a stoplight, I'm going to have to look out. You know, one thing I really liked about the van is, is it's such a great, uh, has a good field of view, good vision out of it. Um, and now I'm. I don't know. I just don't know if it's going to work. I mean, there is no other option because of this emergency brake. I think what is going to have to happen if this is going to be a viable product is that someone's going to have to make an adapter or some sort of a bracket, a lowering bracket for that brake. Uh, because, I mean, there's a tiny percentage of the world population that are going to be able to use this front swivel seat, um, in, it seems to me. I'm gonna drive it. I've gotta run some errands. Uh, Jack and I have gotta go into town to get a few things and I'll try it. I'll drive with it and I'll report back to you on that, on how it feels. Um, it might work, but it might not. So, but it's, it does, it's gonna be really a bummer. It kind of changes my plans if I can't utilize this mm -hmm. and make this work because then it, you know, the nice thing about it is, is to be able to have a living space here, right? So I can let's sit it upright. That's right. I can slide it up. I can sit it upright, and I don't. I don't. I don't hit this. I'm. I'm clear of that. So that's 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 fine. This is actually a comfortable sitting position that I would sit in. Uh, but what my plan is is put a table right here, a flip up table that will go across here that we could all sit and eat at. Um, we'll have to see. All right. Well, that's it. 
we'll, uh, I'll try it out. We'll do a little R&D and I'll get back to you on this to see if it works. Next time, I've got the S-PAR uh, uh, all installed underneath, all the plumbing done. Um, the wiring ran up here and everything's going to be coming together. That's going to be some really interesting stuff. So I think you'll, you'll enjoy that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.